the Holy Gospel according to Mark. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as scribes. Just then, there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And greetings to each and every one of you from your siblings in Christ from coast to coast to coast that make up this part of the family of God that we know as the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. Mark's gospel is really interesting. At least I find it so. It is so compact, so fast moving. In some ways, it's like the Reader's Digest condensed version of the gospel. This morning's gospel reading starts at only the 21st verse of the first chapter. But in the 20 verses prior, we have heard John the Baptist proclaim, prepare the way of the Lord. Jesus has been baptized and then tempted in the wilderness and the first disciples have been called. That is compact writing. Today's gospel lesson is also jam packed. Jesus teaches at the synagogue in Capernaum as one who has authority. A man approaches full of an unseen, unclean spirit. The spirit taunts Jesus. Jesus rebukes the spirit and calls the spirit out. The crowd is amazed both at the teaching and the healing, and Jesus' fame spreads. Jesus teaches with authority, and the unclean spirit taunts him. What does this mean to us in our times? when the phrase fake news has entered into our regular conversation. Jesus is not just any self-proclaimed prophet. He is the Holy One of God. Even his enemies recognize this. When the unclean spirit speaks out, Jesus calls out what is not right. He names the evil. Martin Luther King Jr. said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. I'm going to say that again to you. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. What do these statements of Jesus and of Martin Luther King Jr. mean to us right now in light of the happenings that have been taking place in the capital in the United States? The current pandemic has become the focus of much of our lives. The temptation is for us to be very inward looking, focused on our bubble, on our work, on our province's restrictions and the numbers of cases and numbers of deaths. But the realities of COVID call us to look out beyond ourselves to see the ways that the pandemic is pointing out and underlining disparities and structural inequities around the world, but also in Canada. In Canada, there are higher incidence rates of COVID in poorer and racialized communities. Many in those communities also experience more severe symptoms due to underlying health conditions because of the poverty they live in. Women in the work phase workplace have more challenges overall than men have. They often bear the primary burden of childcare and homeschooling and have fallen farther behind in terms of the gender pay gap. 
There also has been a dramatic increase in domestic violence in Canada and around the world as lockdowns have increased both stress and proximity. We may be concerned that because there are worries about us not having enough vaccine to keep up with our capacity to vaccinate, yet there are many developing countries that still have not received any vaccine. And recent news has shown that countries that are willing to pay above market value for vaccines are able to jump the queue and procure them faster. When I think about these things and then look back on today's text, Jesus asked, Jesus' actions asked me to call to ask these questions. Jesus' actions asked me, call me to ask these questions. <coughs> Pardon me. First, what is the evil? What is the injustice? What are the evil spirits that need to be named and confronted around us? Second, how can we, like Martin Luther King Jr. and like Jesus, stop being silent about things that matter? For to do this is to participate in the new life that Jesus promises us. It's hard for us to know how and when to speak out. We would usually rather wait for things to change and problems to go away. But speaking out to injustice, speaking out to lies, is part of Jesus' command to love our neighbors. It is a way we show our commitment to the common good. It is a way that we can follow the way of Jesus and live by his example. I recently heard Archbishop Linda Nichols talking about the moral injury that people are experiencing. It was a new phrase for me, moral injury. So many things are happening, or happening around us that break our understanding of what our moral code is. Even after the pandemic ends, we will need to continue working to address this moral injury. We will need to follow Jesus in speaking out against injustice, working for healing, and building up healthy community. But we are not alone. In this time of epiphany, we begin by remembering the wise ones who followed a star to find the Christ child, the light of the world. In the season of epiphany, we reflect on how we are called to follow and share that light. Jesus continues to call to each one of us to follow him and sends the spirit to nurture the gifts we have been given to work to build God's reign among us. It is the source of our light, our hope, our love, and our strength. May God bless each and every one of you this day. Amen.